she said that they had separated before and it was not good. Um, she did say that um, she, she was concerned um, about the reaction that would happen if, if it was found out that she was filing. Day one of testimony has concluded tonight in the preliminary hearing in the case against Larry Miliete, who is charged with the murder of his missing wife, Maya. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Kirsten Holmes. Maya Miliete has not been found two years after the Chula Vista mom disappeared. Now a hearing will determine if her husband will be tried for her murder. Tonight we have live team coverage and expert analysis of this case and the day in court. Let's go straight to our Carlo Chiquetto anchoring live from downtown tonight where day one of what's expected to be a lengthy preliminary hearing has just wrapped up. Carlo. Yeah, Marcella, Kirsten, this preliminary hearing could last as long as two weeks with the prosecution calling 25 witnesses to the stand, all in hopes of pushing this toward a trial. This case is one that has become close and personal to many of our viewers over the past couple of years, some of whom even joined searches for Maya. The disappearance of the 39-year-old attractive, uh, by all accounts, doting and loving mother of three obviously struck a nerve with many people and now her husband, Larry Miliete, is on is facing a trial for her murder. Uh, today's hearing is the first time that the public will get to hear witness testimony from the state's case against Larry Miliete. Our David Godfordson was in court all day and has been following this case from the very start. David Godfordson report uh, joins us live from outside the courthouse with the very latest. David. Uh, Carlo, uh, before the hearing began today, I spoke to Larry Miliete's attorney, Benina Martinez, and she told me she will not be calling any witnesses and Larry will not be taking the stand during this preliminary hearing. The prosecution started today with their first witness, a woman who helped Maya Miliete make an appointment to see a divorce attorney. Uh, the, the initial phone call was uh, January 7th. Destiny Johnson works for a family law office in Chula Vista. She spoke on the telephone with Maya Miliete for 20 minutes on the same day Maya went missing, January 7, 2021. Maya wanted to see a divorce attorney. She just said that she wasn't confident that she'd be able to come to our office without being followed. Right away, Johnson was concerned for Maya's safety. The nature of the call with Maya led my personal belief to be that there were control issues, that she did not feel comfortable coming into our office, that she felt that she was, this is my opinion, unsafe to seek a divorce. Johnson felt Maya needed to come to the office right away to speak to an attorney, but Maya wanted to wait until after her family traveled to Big Bear that coming weekend to celebrate her daughter's 11th birthday. I didn't make the appointment for her because she was adamant that she wanted to have a birthday party for her daughter. Um, and she did not want anything to put a hamper on celebrating her daughter's birthday. Maya never showed up for her divorce appointment. She went missing. That's when Johnson called Chula Vista police. I do feel some remorse for sending her an intake form. Um, I feel like that was maybe something that was discoverable and it has made me question my role. Late Wednesday afternoon, forensic specialist David Garber took the stand. He took photographs of the family's home while police were serving a search warrant. Did you see any evidence of any blood splatter inside the house? Yes, I did. Okay, can you tell us about that? Yes, in the main bedroom bathroom, uh, above the one of the vanities, there appeared to be uh, uh, reddish brown stains that were less than one mil millimeter in size. Those stains were... Um, tested using a presumptive blood test and that uh, test came back positive. Now that testimony came right at the end of the day and interestingly 
That testimony about the blood in the bathroom of the master bedroom was solicited under questioning cross-examination by Larry Miliete's own attorney. Uh, the, the further direct examination is expected tomorrow, and we also later on in the preliminary hearing expect to hear from experts who are going to explain whose blood that was, how it may have gotten there, but for right now, that was just kind of left hanging, blood found in the bathroom of the Miliete home. Carlo? David Garfton, you've been covering this case very closely from the start, other than that testimony, which was obviously attention grabbing for you. Today, did anything particular catch your ear that you had been waiting to hear or looking forward to hearing somebody talk about a little bit more on the stand? Well, a lot of people are speculating that there will be some sort of new evidence that the public has not heard about, something uh, that will make it less of a circumstantial case, but we did not hear that today. So we're just going to have to wait and see. As you say, they do have a long list of witnesses to call, but I will say this, uh, Larry Miliete's attorney, uh, to some in observers, did not come across as very professional in the courtroom. Several objections were sustained by the judge under her line of questioning, which seemed to be all over the place. So whether that's uh, her strategy or not, we're gonna have to wait and see on that. But very surprising questioning coming from his attorney in the courtroom today. David Goffton reporting live for us. We look forward to hearing more from you as this goes along. Also in our next half hour, we know that David has a thorough timeline of the case from Maya's disappearance to today's first day in the preliminary hearing. I'm joined right now by our legal expert, a defense attorney, decades of experience with many, many high profile cases. Gretchen Von Helm, thank you for your time joining me. Uh, we're on a balcony just across from the courthouse where there's a very cool breeze tonight. A very cool. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't want to get out of order here too much, but David finished on something that seemed to stand out. His observation and talking to other people that there were perhaps some issues with Larry's defense today. Did you hear any examples of things that were problematic to you? Well, there were some points where she should have made an objection to evidence coming in, um, but she's a not a criminal defense attorney. She is practices family law, so that might be part of it. She did an adequate job on the forensic specialist who took photographs of the scene. She laid out her theory of defense, which is that uh, Ms. Malette went back to the Philippines, and so she asked questions, well, are you familiar with how much makeup was in those drawers? He said no. She said, are you familiar with her purses and her clothing, and you don't know if she grabbed some clothing and a purse and makeup? And he said no. So that was adequately done. It seems a little unusual to me, an observer, that a family law attorney would be doing a criminal case like this. How, how unusual is this for you as, as an observer of court cases? It's very unusual because this is a high-profile murder case, and you would want someone who is a certified specialist in criminal law, in my opinion. Watching this, is there what reasons do you think Larry Miliete may have had for choosing her to defend him? Well, he may be comfortable with her because she speaks his underlying language, which is Tagalog, and he may feel comfortable with her because of the fact that she's um, a woman and might be better understanding of his position. Might present him as a little more sympathetic as well. Correct. Uh, for our viewers that, that haven't seen this so far, preliminary hearing, they may not understand. What are the stakes in this? Well, a preliminary hearing has very low evidence. So the prosecutor has to have probable cause, which is the same amount of evidence that they needed to arrest him. So it's really easy to get through a preliminary hearing because the standard of evidence is very low. So usually the defense does not put on any witnesses, nor do they have their defendant testify in preliminary hearings because of that. The judge is likely to bind over Mr. Miliete for trial. So that means he will move the case forward to trial based on what we've heard so far. Pretty standard, as you said, you mentioned for uh, defense not to call any witnesses in Correct. a prelim. We have less than 30 seconds. Just how tough is it to prosecute a case with no body? 
Well, it is very difficult because you don't have all that forensic evidence on the body. So if they have the corpse, they're able to find bullet holes or poison or whatever other theory that they have as to why she perished. Gretchen von Holmes, thank you for joining me all night on here. It's been a cold one, but your insight has been fantastic. Look forward to hearing from you more as this likely moves to trial. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. For now, I'm going to send it back to you in there, Marcella and Kirsten. I know that coming up uh, at 6.30, David Goffertson, I mentioned earlier, has that timeline for us really laying out what this case is from start to our present moment. Carlo Cicchetto reporting live. Thank you so much for that, Carlo. And as Carla just mentioned, our team coverage does continue here on CBS 8, CBS 8 Plus, and all of our digital platforms. New at 6.30, we will review that timeline of this case from the moment Maya disappeared up until today's preliminary hearing. It has been a long two years, and we will bring you all of that for you at 6.30.